Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0, live from the Ham Shack. My name is Jason. My call sign is Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo. And today, um, this is actually going to be a revamp for my episode 7 video about the TYT MD380 DMR HT radio. I had, um, if you've watched my channel for a while, I put up a video uh, about a month ago maybe for the MD380 HT when it came out. And um, we're going to see part of that video here in a minute, but there was a mistake that I made that I was given some bad information and I didn't follow up on it like I should have, but um, there's a couple of times in that original video where I mentioned that uh, the MD380 uh, from TYT is actually made by CoValue. Uh, this is not the case. The reason I thought this, besides the fact that I asked him if it was the same radio as the CoValue radios, and they, they told me it was, but I think there was a miscommunication and loss in translation there. Um, <clears throat> the software the programming software for the MD380 is exactly the same as the programming software for the Connect Systems CS700, which also is exactly the same for the Anytone D858. All three DMR HT radios have the exact same programming software. Um, so it really kind of seems like they're the same. Now, the, the TYT, the menus are different, the screen is different, and everything else about it is different. But the CS700 and the D858 from Minitone, even the menus are the same. They look almost like the same radio. And they all use the same software, except that the software is not interchangeable. When you, when you launch the software from any three of the manufacturers, it'll come up and it'll say model, and it'll have a hard-coded number in there for whatever radio you're at. CS700, D858, uh, MD380, whatever, whatever radio you've got, it'll have it hard-coded. You won't be able to switch around. But the menus, the function, the look, the feel, the colors set up the time slot, the, the digital channels, everything in the software is exactly the same. You can tell that it was written by the same people. So, <clears throat> having said that, the TYT MD380, which has actually been out at the time of this revamp video, I've carried them on my website for about six weeks, and I keep selling out of them. I keep ordering more from TYT, and uh, I'll usually order more right about the time I get, I'll get a shipment in, I'll order some the next day for the next shipment, and by the time that next shipment gets here, my first shipment will have sold out sometimes before that shipment arrives. I wish I could order more at a time, but there's a, uh, there's a um, well, I just can't afford to buy a big chunk of them all at one time. So I order as many as I can, and you know, there's a lot of uh, demand for them too. TYT doesn't have a uh, an infinite supply, so there's that's part of the problem. But this is a fantastic radio. It's got a very good screen. It's got excellent clean transmit audio. Uh, I've been very happy with it and the test results. We're gonna uh, look at it here in just a second uh, with the video. Um, it's got a couple of quirks that I think will be updated soon via firmware. And um, we'll see how it goes from there. So thanks for watching. If you saw the original video, I apologize about the misinformation, but I wanted to get it corrected and that's why I'm shooting this new video. All right, good evening. This is our first look at the Titera or TYT MD380, a UHF DMR HT radio. Uh, they got some new fancy packaging here for it. It uh, comes with a charger, case, battery clip, and it comes with two antennas, this little stubby job here and then the one that's on the radio right there. So that's kind of good. Uh, several of these radios these days are coming with uh, multiple antennas so that you can, you kind of got your pick of whatever you want. Whether you want a longer antenna for better performance or whether you want a shorter antenna for more compact use if you're carrying it around in your belt clip. So this is the TYT MD380. You can see the comparison in size and screens between this radio, which is the Titera. This is the brand new Connect System CS750. And this is the Anytone ATD858. The Anytone came out about a month ago. The Connect Systems came out about a week and a half or a couple of weeks ago. And the Titera came out 
about the same time as the 750 a couple weeks ago. Um, I carried these radios. They're all on my website at grapevineamateurradio.com. Uh, the Connect system sells for $239. The Anytone sells for $199. And the Titera is going to sell for probably $189. Um, they all use the same... Well, no, that's not true. The Titera and the Anytone use the same software as the Connect System CS700. The 750, if you've watched episode 4 of uh, Ham Radio 2.0, we debuted the CS750, and it... Um, it has a brand new version of software, um, new uh, new categories, new uh, menus, new everything. It's a totally different look and feel to it. But the Titera software and the Anytone software is exactly the same as the Connect System CS700 software. You can't interchange them, which is kind of strange. Um, because when you first launch the software, it comes with, with, a, with a model number of whatever radio you've installed it for. And that model number is, is hard-coded into the software, so you can't go change it. So if you try to plug in a Titera into the Connect System software or an Anytone in the Titera software, it's going to say wrong. It's going to come up with an error that says wrong model number. Uh, for some reason, that whoever the software designers wrote it, they wrote it specifically per radio, but it's it uh, services multiple radios, so whichever. But you can see, uh, you know, this video is primarily about this one. You can see the very large display. Um, your talk group is up here, your zone is here, and your channel number is here. And of course, you set all this in the software. Um, so I already have all this plug this uh, programmed up. Uh, you can go into the menu, choose your zone. I've got two zones set in this radio right now, Dallas and South Lake. Let me get a little bit close to the camera here. Dallas and South Lake are my two zones. And then it says your zone down at the bottom, what channel number you're on, and the name of the talk group. And I can name the talk group whatever I want. So the large color display is nice. Um, I did a little bit of tinkering with this radio the, the other day and got some good signal reports from it. Uh, this radio is advertised to be front face pro programmable, front panel programmable, FPP. It is not. At least not at this time. I am assuming that the Titera will be uh, uh, firmware upgradable to be FPP, the same as the Connect System CS750. This one is supposed to have a firmware release sometime in a couple of months that will give it the FPP feature. Um, Titera, I've actually put a, I've contact, I'm a Titera uh, dealer, so I have a, a direct contact with them in China. I've sent them an email asking about details of the FPP feature, and I'm waiting a response, um, at this time. Uh, when I get, uh, when I get a response, we'll probably, I should get a response before I finish putting this entire video together. So later in this video, I should, uh, I should say exactly what kind of time frame we're looking at for that. Anyway, that is the MD380. I'll go ahead and key up a talk group here. Nobody talking on North America right now. That's kind of unusual. <laughs> I was sitting here last night listening to him just fine. I'm not able to key it from inside the building here. I was receiving them last night, but just on this little HT antenna here, I'm not able to key it from inside the building. The repeater's probably about 20 miles from here. So, anyway. It's got your standard stuff. There's somebody on Worldwide that's trying to come through. Uh, they're talking on Worldwide Talk Group number one. So it's got your standard stuff on it that you'd expect to see. Uh, you can program your zones. You can program your group calls and your private calls. You can program your uh, talk groups. It's supposed to hold a, hold a thousand channels, um, so that's nice. And um, it's it's a neat looking radio. It's definitely got a better screen than these two guys do. Definitely got a better screen. I've gotten good audio reports on it. If you want to, um, if you want to. 
have a QSO with me sometime and want to hear what it sounds like, hit me up. Uh, my uh, my DMR subscriber ID is 3148062. Add me to your list, 3148062. Shoot me a text message to my phone number that's listed on my website and tell me to get on North America. If I'm available, I'll get on North America and we can do a QSO. So that is that for now. All right, so here is get a little bit better look, close up look at this. Uh, we did find. I said earlier that I wasn't sure if this thing would actually do front face programmable, what they call FPP, front panel programmable, as commonly referred to. It's kind of a Motorola term, but uh, FPP to where you don't have to have a computer to program it. This is totally computer programmable. Everything I've put in this radio is via the the USB cable that comes with, or it doesn't come with it, but that is sold with it, and um, the software that's a free download from my website. So it totally works on the computer. Um, there's a click in the software that you have to click. It's a checkbox, and, it's, and it says radio programmable. And if you open up the software, it's under the menu item header on the left-hand side. You open up the software, the, um, the menu item, which is the third down from the top on the left menu, it opens up the menu item window. And uh, over on the far right side, there's a checkbox that says program radio. Once you click that and then shoot the code plug into your radio, then it becomes uh, front panel pro programmable front panel programmable if I can say that word so it is and it's not because you have to have the software and shoot the code plug in there to turn it on so by itself it's not FPP but once you turn it on it is FPP except I found that it actually does not work I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be fixed in a firmware update, and I will be contacting TYT to confirm that because I'm a dealer of theirs. But if you go into the menu here, as you can see, menu, scroll down or scroll up to utilities, your third option here, which is not there until you check that box in the software, your third option is program radio. You go in here, and you've got all your settings, RX frequency, TX, channel name, timeout timer, your CTCS, DSS, which is only used for analog, your color code, which your color code is your basically your CTCSS tone for um, digital. Time's out too quickly. Let's see. In fact, let me change this here. Here's how you change the backlight, in case you wanted to know that. Backlight, always. Okay, that'll kill your battery, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it'll work good. So, RX frequency, TX frequency, channel name, timeout timer, CTCSS, DCS for digital PL tone. You can program analog, color code, repeater slot, and that's all of them. Seven different options in there, front face, face programmable. If I go into my current channel, now it depends on where your knob is, up at the top. I go into my current channel name. You'll notice at the bottom left corner is confirm and the bottom right corner is delete. See that clear as day. So you can delete. If I want to call it Metro. Well, see that's another instance of it not working. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second because I did. No, it's not working again. So it kind of works and it kind of doesn't. Okay, so what I found is that it you, you basically can't program the frequencies, the RX and the TX frequency, because once you go in there and you confirm, you'll notice that the bottom right corner says back. There is no delete like there was in the other menu. So there's no way you see your cursor flashing. Hopefully you can see the cursor flashing there at the end. Go back into it. 
boom, program. Cursor flashing at the end right there. You can't, you can't back up. I can press anything in here. Oh, there it goes right there. Okay, you can back up, but if I'm pressing five, it only enters zeros. That's the that that's what it is. So it seems like now I didn't confirm it, so it didn't save it. So you can back up. The delete button's not there. I just I just learned I was testing this earlier, but the numbers don't work. I noticed this earlier when I was messing around with the radio when I was trying to go in here and do a uh, a text message. If I wanted to write a text message, it's the same thing. See, it's not. It's not putting letters in, it's putting a zero or nothing. Okay, now that one seems to work. So the seven key works. The five key does not, four does not, one does not, two. Uh, the nine, okay, so the bottom row works. And that's it. So really, you can't do it yet, and I'm guessing that this is going to be fixed in a firmware update. I tried this on, before you think I got a lemon radio, because that's, that's the first thing I thought. I thought, okay, I got a lemon radio, let me try another one. I tried this on two different models of the, I, have, I currently have five of these left. I've sold a few of them. I currently have five of the MD380s left. I tried it on two different radios, and it worked, and it behaves the exact same way on two different radios. So... The intent for FPP is there. The reality is that it is not working yet. So, be watching this video on the comments for updates because I'm going to contact TYT uh, today, Saturday, when I'm recording this video. I'm going to uh, email them. They'll respond back to me probably on Monday and uh, ask them if this has been if this issue has been reported, and if so, if there's a fix for it, and if not, I will. Uh, see if they can come up with a fix for it. So, still a good radio, still totally programmable via computer, just not FPP quite yet. <clears throat> All right, so that was a look at the TYT MD380 radio. Uh, DMR is UHF 400 to 470 megahertz. Uh, you can see that the programming on it is, uh, via computer, it's fine. Um, from the front keypad, it's it's not all there quite yet, but I think they're doing they're working on some updates. I've been in constant contact with TYT. They should be coming out with some updates soon um, via firmware. So it should just be a flash of the radio. So if you've bought one and a, a couple of things on it don't work, like what we just showed, um, we should be able to update it via firmware. Check my website, GrapevineAmateurRadio.com. From the top of the homepage, there's a Downloads tab. Click on that tab. Any kind of updated software or firmware I have for all the radios that I sell will be on that um, on that page. You're welcome to download it. It's free. Uh, there's no charge for downloads from my website. So um, go out there, take a look, and uh, we welcome your comments on our video. Uh, go check out our other episodes. 73, good afternoon.